So it launched. <clears throat> Aloha and welcome to this Hawaii Invasive Species Awareness Month presentation from the Nature Conservancy about invasive species in Kanapu'u Preserve Lanai. Um, as folks are coming in, and as we as Serena gets the Facebook Live going, um, there is a poll that should be available to everybody. Um, that is on the Zoom. So if you don't mind um, filling out the poll, it's just a little bit of background with, about where you're from, your back, um, and it helps us with our planning for these presentations. So mahalo. All right, aloha everybody. We're also live on Facebook right now. So if you're joining us on Facebook, aloha, good morning. Uh, we're also recording on Zoom. Um, so these recordings will be available um, later on the Hawaii Invasive Species Council YouTube page. Um, we're live streaming this on the Maui Invasive Species Committee uh, Facebook page since we're hosting this talk. So you can go back and see that recording um, today as soon as we're done. Um, and we are also going to be in a webinar format, so we won't be able to necessarily see you or hear you, but you can interact with um, Kekoa through the chat. At the bottom of the Zoom, there's a Q&A tab that you can hit to ask um, Kekoa questions. There's also our chat feature. If you're on Facebook, you can put any questions into the comment section as well. So that's sort of just some housekeeping on how our format works. Um, I'm Serena Fukushima. I'm the Public Relations and Education Specialist with the Maui Invasive Species Committee, and we're hosting our Maui Nui presentations for the Hawaii Invasive Species Awareness Month. Uh, we also have Beth Speeth, who's with the Hawaii Invasive Species Council, as well as with Maui Invasive Species Committee. And I think Keoki, is Keoki joining us too? I saw someone else pop in. <laughs> I think we it's might like have... Okay, yeah, we also will have Kyoki Kanafokai, who is with the Nature Conservancy as well, um, supporting Keikoa in his presentation. Um, so without further ado, I would like to introduce our guest speaker. Um, Keikoa Garat was raised on Maui's beautiful North Shore in Paia. Keikoa has been TNC's sole field, sole field technician for the past five and a half years, carrying out the day-to-day -day field activities with our um, Nature Conservancy Maui work. The groundwork consists of invasive weed management, fence construction and maintenance, data collection, and feral animal removal within the Nature Conservancy's Waikamoe, Kupuna Kea, and Kanepu'u preserves. Growing up with a sense of aloha aina in his early years, Keiko has immersed himself in the conservation world, starting with the high school internship through Kupu's HYCC summer program. He later attended the University of Hawaii at Hilo and received a bachelor's in science in environmental science with a minor in geography. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Kekoa and hand the reins over to him to talk about um, the Nature Conservancy's work with invasive species in Kanepu'u on the island of Lanai. Right. So mahalo Kekoa. Yeah. Mahalo Nui, Serena, and Liz for the introduction. So I'll just get right into it. Aloha Kako. Today I'd like to give you a brief overview of the history and current work efforts at Kanipu'u Preserve on the island of Lanai. It first became a preserve in 1989 when Dole Foods finalized a conservation easement with the Nature Conservancy for us to be the caretakers of the area in perpetuity. The preserve was created to protect and enhance the native Olopua and Lama dryland forests that once covered large portions of the lowlands of the island. Kanipu'u is divided into seven separate units with two plant communities that dominate the landscape, the native closed canopy dryland forest and an unwanted alien shrubland. Areas of bare soil also occur throughout the preserve. Kanipu'u's seven disjunct sections range from 13 to 368 acres in size for a total of 590 acres. On this map, the native forest areas appear in lime green. 
Combined, these native dominated areas make up considerably less than half of the 590 acres, and the remaining dominant community is a mix of introduced non-native plant species. As mentioned earlier, the native forest canopy is dominated by llama and olopua, with the non-native Christmas berry also mixing some species. The Lanai community and other members of the public were involved at Kanipu'u before it was a conservancy preserve. Much of this area was protected from 1911 through 1935 by fencing and other efforts carried out by George Monroe, who at the time was the ranch manager for the area. Subsequent ranchers removed these fences. From 1970 to 1989, dedicated volunteers in the Hui Malama Pono or Lanai built four small built four small fence exposures that help protect patches of native forest and associated rare plants. Two of them are bordered in yellow in this slide within the larger Kanipu unit. Without these efforts, the last remnants of this rare pine forest type would probably have been destroyed. The Conservancy soon fenced the entire unit along with, other, along with the other six units in 1992 with the six foot tall deer fence and began to systematically remove the animals. Two main roads run through the Kanipu unit, Polihua and Lapoiki. The roads have cattle guards at the three entrances and exits to the preserve. Polihua Road, which runs through the middle of Kanipu, is the main road to Keahiakavelo, or the, or the Gardens of the Gods. 11 rare plant taxas have been reported in Kanipu. Six of these are listed as federally endangered. However, two of these listed species, along with another with no federal status, are known only from historical records and have not been seen in Kanipu'u Preserve since 1930. The four endangered plant species currently in the preserve are the fragrant leaf flower Gardenia wigamiae, Iliahi or sandalwood, Onamia menziesii, and the Maohauhele. The Maohauhele was planted in the preserve and may not have occurred there naturally. The understory has been severely damaged as a result of historical grazing and few native species remain. Other native species found throughout the preserve include Ohemakai, Ahakea, Alaa, Aea, and Keahi. Unfortunately, non-native flora and fauna have slowly taken over the island and are constant threats reactively control and, present, and prevent from destroying the last stronghold of the native Lariland forest on the island. Lantana Komara and Christmasberry dominate the non-native landscape, but they grow at a much slower rate. And in Kanipu'u, they usually take over spaces where native thickets of forest, of forest plants are not present. The two main threats that we do actively seek to control in the preserve is a non-native vine and passive flora suberosa and the infamous axis deer. Passive flora suberosa, or commonly known as the corky stem passion flower, is a herbaceous vine that clings to other vegetation by means of tendrils, which are thread-like appendages commonly found on climbing plants. It is a close relative to the great tasting lilikoi and of another highly invasive vine, banana polka. Native to South and Central America, Passiflora suberosa has become invasive in all parts of the Pacific and has quickly established a presence in Kanipu'u Preserve. As an herbaceous vine, it grows rapidly, smothers, and outcompetes native vegetation, particularly in the cell canopy areas of a forest. This growth habit displaces native habitat and further facilitates the growth of invasive species. It produces purple fruits, which make it, lightly, which make it, which make it highly attractive to, to birds that then distribute its seeds throughout their entire home range, making this plant even more difficult to control and nearly impossible to eradicate. Because of this, TNC's approach to controlling this vine is through target suppression or species threat, or species threat abatement. Herbicide, Garland Ford mixed with biodiesel for a 20% solution is used with a snip and drip method to control in larger general forest areas. No method is, while a manual control method is used near the vicinity of endangered native species. Using a manual approach reduces the risk of accidental targets being hit, something that is especially important when working around federally endangered species. Axis deer, which are also known as shital, are native to Sri Lanka and parts of India and Nepal. 
The history of axis deer in Hawaii can be traced back to 1867 when King Kamehameha V received eight animals, three bucks, four doe, and one male fawn, as a gift from Hong Kong, then a colony of Britain. These eight deer re were released on the island of Molokai and were later introduced to Lanai and Maui in 1959 for recreational hunting. With no natural predators such as wolves, tigers, giant snakes, and alligators, their populations were allowed to skyrocket in the islands. Today, there is an estimated 25 to 30,000 axis deer population on Lanai, while the human population sits around 2,700. Axis deer are excellent grazers and love to forage on native vegetation. They also trample through huge landscapes and damage nests of endemic ground nesting bird species. The unchecked deer population, along with other unsustainable land use practices, has drastically changed the landscape of Lanai from a rich and diverse native forest into a desert-like landscape. At TNC's Kanepu'u Preserve, the primary management objective is the complete eradication of axis deer in all units. Since the original fence construction in 1992, Kanepu'u fences were rebuilt several times due to persistent weather conditions. The climate at Kanepu'u is relatively dry. Rainfall averages 28 inches per year and falls primarily in the rainy season from November through March. Additional moisture comes in from the north in the form of fog, sorry, that condenses on vegetation. Trade winds are accelerated by funneling between the up, upwind islands of Molokai and Maui. These strong and nearly constant winds increase evaporation of moisture, vegetation loss, and soil erosion in and around Kanepu'u and sandblast our fences. Because of this, fence maintenance continues to be an extremely important task for the exclusion of feral ungulates. Over the years, we have learned to adapt to these weather conditions and have used many different fence materials from galvanized smooth and hog wire, stainless steel and now mono monofilament fishing line and plastic deer and elk mesh. Galvanized material disintegrates quickly and stainless steel is extremely pricey. So far, we have Palma'i, Kahui'iki, and Lapo'iki fences completed, completed using both monofilament and UV resistant plastic mesh. Palma'i was finished in 2014 and has been deer proof and has deer proof mesh material surrounding the unit. It's still holding up strong, but goes through a significant amount of deer pressure on the outside. So some spots need small patching from time to time. Kahui Iki and Lapo Iki units were installed in 2021 and were built with elk proof material instead, which is more heavy duty and should be the, and should be the solution to withstand deer slamming into our fences. Hunting is the only method TNC uses for ungulate control in Kanipu'u and has become increasingly more effective over the years with new innovative technologies. Original hunting efforts were only conducted during daylight with a wait and stalk approach, which limited the number of deer you could remove at once. We've also used hunting dogs to help with our efforts, but it was still not an effective method for eradication. We relied on our dogs to push deer into open areas for opportunistic shooting. The dogs would also tire quickly from, constant running, from constantly running around it would be exposed to high temperatures while doing so. Spotlights were later introduced so we could also hunt at night. So we could also hunt at night using different color spectrums, green, blue, and red. They are not as blinding and less susceptible from scaring animals away. Axis deer tend to be fairly active throughout the night, so using kill lights increased successful hunts. But we still had no idea how many deer were within a certain unit still weren't able to completely remove all animals. As you can see in these videos, the deer are not afraid of the color spectrum. Our latest innovation to our hunts is the use of drones with a FLIR, forward-looking infrared camera attached to it. Using this device allows us to scout and count animals within our preserve, both during the day and night. 
However, the ground temperature has to be cold enough so that the warmth of the animal still sticks out on the FLIR camera. The pilot usually hovers over above an animal or herd and guides a hunter in, in for them to remove. In 2021, we were able to completely remove all animals in the Lapa'iki and Kahua'iki unit with the use of drone and FLIR technology. This video, you can, see, you can clearly see how helpful this new tool is to, to us by comparing the true color imagery side by side with the imagery used with the FLIR camera. If you look at the FLIR camera, it's that black speck. It's currently in black hot. As you can see, it is nearly impossible to see the deer while they hunker down in the thick brush. This video is a this is a video of the pilot guiding in one of the hunters on the ground. And here's a standstill image comparing the two different cameras. On the right, you cannot see, it's impossible to see the, the deer in a thick brush, but on the left with using the FLIR camera, it sticks out like a sore thumb. So using drones has helped us, has helped our hunting efforts tremendously. However, the new tool doesn't come without its own limitations, which include wind speed, ground heat, and fog, to blur the visibility, battery life, and confusion with, with portrayed imagery. As seen in this picture, the small white specks could easily be confused with an animal, but in fact, those specks are just rocks that retain heat throughout the night. Flying in high winds or winds with strong, with strong gusts lower the battery life and can also potentially cause the pilot to lose the drone. <clears throat> So what does the future outlook look like for Kane Pu'u? Um, Biocontrol is, is in the mix for the Passiflora suberosa. It's a little, it has a controversy with when any con biocontrol release. So doing the right science and having the right science behind it with the correct studies. It could be something that we, we will implement in our control efforts in the long term. And we would also want to retrofit the fences around all the other units and remove the remaining animals after the fences are up. So with that, i just like to say mahalo. Mahalo to Pono Pacific for helping with our fence efforts and for helping remove the Passiflora for us. Pep, especially Hank Oppenheimer for all the hard work he's done to, to save our last uh, or our remnants of our really rare species. And of course, the Lanai community. And with that, um, I'll open it up for questions. Awesome, mahalo kekoa, mahalo to TNC for protecting some of the last native forest on Lanai from these invasive species. I think 
it's such an amazing contrast when you see Kane Pu'u um, in fairly intact, you know, within those boundaries, and then that stark contrast of just denuded landscape. And so um, just mahalo to you folks for keeping these really special species alive and, and protected. Um, so we just want to open it up for questions. If anybody has questions, we have a few participants in our Facebook Live. We've got some participants here in Zoom. Anybody have questions for Keikoa? Um, you can put them in the chat. You can put them in our question and answer box. But now's the time to ask him live. <laughs> well, while people are putting together their questions, do you mind if I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. It's actually a two-parter. One, 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 I was curious, how tall are those fences um, that you're putting up? And do deer, do you ever see deer getting caught on them? They're uh, eight feet right now. And um, we don't see deer really jumping that high. Yeah, well, we haven't seen them yet, at least. <laughs> I can attest to how they work. Um, as a hunter myself, I was in Lanai on the border of your fence and saw a deer try to jump over and it couldn't and it turned around and ran off. And so we just happened to be driving by and we're like, oh, it's working, good. <laughs> so Yeah, usually they prefer to try to get under the fences. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. We have a question. Um, Kyle Kajimoto, he says, great presentation, Kekoa. How does the sound of the drone affect the deer? Um, it does sometimes um, scare them away. We have we try to fly it at high elevations where the deer does, don't really, can't really hear the drone, but usually they hunker down and stay in the thick brush and that's where the the drone pilot can guide in the ground hunter and hopefully yeah. get a good shot. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing technology too. I mean, just seeing that contrast, contrast, you know, with the FLIR and with the drone that you guys can utilize that technology. Great. Awesome. Any other questions? I guess I'm curious um, if you noticed any significant impacts during this big drought that we had. I know um, hearing stories on Lanai, the deer were just kind of everywhere, even in the town and um, you know, hungry, looking for food. Did you folks notice more pressure during the drought of them trying to push their way in? Uh, no, because there's like not really that much water. There's, there's not much water troughs over there too, so. There's, mm. yeah. That's good. It, it, there wasn't a lot of pressure, but you can see that the deer were malnourished mm. and were desperate for, for water. Yeah. Well, good to know they weren't trying to push their way in too, too badly and that things were keeping relatively safe within the preserve. All right, well, let's see. I'm, let me go check on Facebook. Any questions on Facebook? I think you had such a thorough presentation that nobody has questions. They all feel very well informed. Um, Cynthia Robinson on Facebook is giving a thumbs up. So we'll just save a couple more minutes for questions, but I did want to just share a little bit about some upcoming presentations and then um, maybe catch some last couple of questions before we sign off. But um, we just want to mahalo you again for um, presenting and sharing a little bit about what's happening on Lanai and the work that you folks are doing. We're trying to really encapsulate Maui Nui, um, at least on our end with our high sound presentation. So it's really great to hear some updates on what's happening over there. Um, our presentations coming up for today, we have a virtual huaka'i uh, with the Kauai Invasive Species Committee. And so you can go on their Instagram or Facebook to watch that and to Hele on to Kauai. Um, next week, Monday, we have um, on Valentine's Day, the 14th at 10.30, uh, Kauai Invasive Species Committee is doing a webinar on their 20th anniversary success story. So really good, positive, uplifting things for them to share um, for that presentation. The 15th, we have another Maui presentation um, on updates of aerial treatments of Maui's largest little fire ant infestation in Nahiku with Brooke Mankin with Maui Invasive Species Committee. 
And then after that, we have several more presentations next week. So we have a pretty packed schedule all month for Hawaii Invasive, uh, Hawaii Invasive Species Awareness Month. I'm going to drop the link in the chat if Beth didn't beat me to it. Oh, there, yep, she beat me. So it's in there. <laughs> you can go check it out. And I think I see one more question. So um, someone is saying, excellent presentation. Did I miss it? Are all the animals out of Kanepu? Not in all units. Uh, we have Lapa'iki and Kahue'iki units um, here with no animals in there. Awesome. We're still working on uh, retrofitting the rest of the fences. So until that is up and, and strong, then we will start pushing our hunting efforts a little bit harder. Great. Awesome. Good question. And thank you for that answer. Awesome. All right, well, if there are no other questions, then we will wish you a happy Aloha Friday to everybody attending and mahalo nui for joining us. And we hope to see you again later tonight with Hawaii or next week. So ahui ho, everybody. Thank you. And mahalo. <laughs>